Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this beautiful photograph that I, found, that I found on Pixabay, the link will be below, of Vancouver Island. Um, it's a beautiful beach, I think it's called Tofino. Um, what I've done is I've simplified the photograph with a very simple line drawing showing the horizon, the rocky outcrop, the position of the trees and um, the distant tree line along the horizon and a few lines just to indicate the lay of the land for the beach. Um, that's all I need, all the information that I think will be important as a guide when I paint. I'm using Saunders Waterford cold pressed 90 pound um, paper. It's 100% cotton. It's taped to my board and my board is at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees. Um, it will buckle as I paint, but then as it dries, it's held in place by the tape, so it will flatten out again. Now I've wet the sky area all over, and I'm using my um, Chinese bamboo harky brush to sweep across some quite dilute and pale raw sienna across the sky. And now I'm just introducing a mixture of cerulean blue across the top. I don't want the sky to be completely blue, I want the sky quite quite pale. So I'm just pulling across small amounts of the cerulean blue. I'm going through the raw sienna and if I don't scrub the paint around too much then I won't get green. I will still have that differentiation between yellow and blue. I'm very, very gently feathering the brush up through the paint just to smooth and blend the sky a little bit. It should just diffuse and soften as it dries. Now this is a clean, damp, small Pro Art Harky brush and I'm just pulling some paint out or gently lifting it and redistributing it a little bit just to feather it through that paint to soften the sky before I let it dry. Just want to soften that darker paint there. It's still nice and wet, so as it dries, it will soften back nicely. I'm just going to clean up across that horizon line a little bit. And the little bit of blue pulled across the sand will just act to show the sort of reflection of the sky in the sand. Now I've made up a thicker mixture, just slightly thicker, of the two colours, raw sienna and cerulean blue, into a green to just dab onto the still damp paper for my softly diffused um, distant tree line. Just using the tips of the small harky brush just to dab in an impression of those distant trees. Now I'm using the same brush and the same mixture just to start off the foliage and undergrowth on this rocky outcrop while the paint's, uh, paper is still damp so that I can get nice softly diffused um, passages of paint. Now I'm going straight into the raw sienna and adding some of that to this area too just to build up some, some variation in the colours not in the tone, because it's all mid-tone at the moment, um, across the rocky outcrop, so that when I come to add more detail, I've got a nice underpainting um, of softly diffused paint. Just going to strengthen up the distant tree line a little bit across the base. Not too much, just adding a little bit more variation in the colours. And now with Payne's Grey, I'm going to add a little bit of tone around the base of the rocky outcrop and just a few sweeps across the beach here and there and a little bit of dark dotted around where the foliage will go. This is just to start off uh, the shadows and the darker tones of the painting and to have them softly diffused as well. 
I want the overall look of the sand and the beach and the sky to be quite light and ethereal, so I'm not going to overdo the darks um, across the main part of the beach. I'll put in some stronger contrast with the rocks a bit later, but for now I'm going to use a clean, damp flat brush just to feather through those brush strokes that I've made across the beach in the Payne's Grey, just to try and use horizontal strokes to kind of... Um, suggest the lay of the land and the sort of ripples in the sand the reflections of a bit of water and also just to generally soften things up and pull some very fine lines from the paint that's already on the page um, across that area there now i'm using horizontal brush strokes to start with and then i'm going to go in and start pulling down some vertical brush strokes um, just pulling down the existing paint that's there, then going back and doing a few more horizontal brush strokes, just until I get the sand looking as I want it to look for this underpainting. Now I think that will do, and I'm just now going to leave it to dry completely. Right, it's all nice and bone dry, so now I've mixed up some raw sienna with a little bit of sepia in it, um, a fairly weak mixture. And I'm just going to use the small harky brush and the tips and the corners of the brush to dab in, in sort of horizontal strokes, the indication of some of the rocks um, that are underneath and between, showing through between all the foliage and the bushes and things. I'm trying to vary, vary slightly my tones with slightly more sepia here, slightly more raw sienna there, and just dabbing around and just trying to build up the rocky outcrop loosely without too much detail. Now I've got quite a rich dark mixture of Payne's Grey on my flat brush and I'm going to start building up rocks and shadows. I'm just using the tips and the corner again of the flat brush but it's giving me a more geometric shapes and more linear lines according to whether I dab with it or whether I pull the brush from side to side but I'm building up the rocks um, on the wet sand and the ripples and the shadows um, just underneath the rocky out outcrop and across the beach hopefully without overdoing it. I'm slowly building this up taking my time trying to avoid any marks in the central area that I want to keep quite light. I do like um, this three quarter inch Cotman synthetic flat brush. I find it does a really good job of painting things like rocks and ripples and reflections. It's a very useful tool. Still just moving carefully across that shadowed area, just building up tone and texture trying to make sure everything sort of is defined and sort of linked, but in a very loose way. And now I'm just going to drag a pale mixture of sepia and a bit of Payne's Grey just across the foreground in a sort of a, of a pale wash, just to darken uh, the colour of the sand a little bit, just along the bottom and across, across the edge. Now that the beach is nearly done, I'm going to start work on the trees. I'm using, I think it's a number two or a number three rigger to just put in the tree trunks with single brush strokes, trying to keep the brush strokes 
um, from getting too even. I want the trees to look quite distorted because they're very wind blown, um, being growing from a rocky outcrop right on on the edge of this um, rugged coastline. So I'm going to try to make sure that my tree trunks are a little bit sort of twisted and deformed. I think they're pine trees of some sort. So I'm going to try and see if I can get that look to them with the branches sticking out at strange angles. I'm following the photo again in general terms, not specifics. I'm just trying to get the general atmosphere of the photograph rather than trying to copy every line. Now that will do for the branches and now I've just got quite a weak mixture of cerulean blue and I'm just going to sweep that across in a, a light wash with the flat brush across the beach making it slightly streaky in some places and a sort of flattish wash in others around the edges avoiding the central area again that I want to keep light just to get a little bit of that sky reflected in the watery sand. And that'll do. I'm now going to let that dry completely and then come in and finish the painting. Now that it's dry, I'm going to um, paint in the foliage on the trees. Um, I'm mixing up again the mixture of raw sienna and cerulean blue to create a sort of a lightish green. And I'm just going to use the small harky brush, the edges, the chisel edge and the corners just to make these sort of distinctive pine tree shape canopies um, running across the branches. I want to leave plenty of air gaps and air holes. Just fairly sparse foliage. Just build it up slowly and gently and carefully with the tips of the brush. I'm going to dot in a bit of Payne's Grey just to darken up certain areas. I'm not going to overdo that, just dotting it in here and there and it should disperse or diffuse into the wet paler green paint. I'm going to take this opportunity just to get some of that darker paint into the rocky outcrop for some darker tone and shadows sort of something and nothing really. It could be rock, it could be foliage, it doesn't really matter as long as it works together to create um, the look of this rocky outcrop. Softening back with a squirrel mop brush, just clean and damp in places so I get soft edges and hard edges. Now I think I need a slightly bluer green um, but one that's still going to be in keeping with the rest of the colours that I've used. So I'm using one of my favourite ready mix greens which is Perylene Green, Windsor and Newton. Um, and I'm just going to add that underneath the trees. Just with my small calligraphy brush I'm just going to dot it around here and there up into the canopy just to take off some slightly finer details around the edges of the branches in places, just tiny little dots here and there, um, just to feather out the look of those, those pine tree canopies a little bit. And finally I've added a little bit of uh, raw sienna into the canopies as well, just to get a bit of sunlight into there a bit. And now I'm scra scraping out with the corner of a plastic store card just through um, the, the wet paint on the rocky outcrop and just through areas of the trees and the canopies just to create some sort of sticks and twigs and texture. 
So I'm approaching the end of the painting process, so it's stepping back now and having a look and deciding what still needs to be done. Now I think the next thing that I need to do is just to put a, a bit more definition, not too much, but just darken up um, underneath the distant trees, just to establish um, a slightly more uneven looking coastline in the distance. I don't want it too dark or defined because that is distant, so I need to keep it fairly pale. If I've done it too dark, I can sort of just knock it back a little bit with, um, soften it with the clean damp squirrel mop brush. Now I think that's okay and again taking a good look at the painting I think that the rocky outcrop itself just needs a little bit more detail as do the trees. So I've got my finer rigger here, um, I think it's a size one and just going to paint in some smaller branches. Not too many, and I'm trying to keep them oriented the same way as the larger brushes to keep up the look of those being pine trees. Maybe just bring those down a little bit lower on that side. Now I've swapped to my slightly thicker rigger, it's a size two or a three, and I'm now just going to pull up some skeleton trees from the rocky areas on the rocky out outcrop. I just think it needs that just to balance up. And here I'm diverging from the, paint, uh, the photograph and I'm working just on the painting now to finish it off. Um, the painting has sort of de developed a life of its own. It's become a sort of separate entity from the photograph. So now I'm not even going to look at the photograph. I'm just going to make sure that, um, in my mind, that the painting balances and works in its own right. Just a few more skeleton trees and branches, just here and there, I think just adds a bit more to that focal point area. And that's enough, I think. Now, just to add a little bit of life to the painting, um, I'm going to add a few birds with a fine rigor, just in the Payne's Grey. Not too many. I think just three there. Um, just dab them out with a tissue just so that they're not too. Oops, forgot to clip the board back on. Just dab them out a little tiny bit. And now a couple of birds near to the trees, just either about to land or rising from the tops of the trees. And I think that's it, that's done. It's the finished painting. Let's um, take a look and remove the tape, tearing the tape off or pulling the tape away from the paper so we don't tear the painting um, and reveal the painting with its nice clean white border. I always like seeing this, especially with, when there's a sky that's been painted going right off across the tape. So that when you see the clean border, you get an idea of how it would look when it's framed. And I quite like the way this has turned out, but I think it just needs one more tree just across that large gap on the rocky headland. There's a large plain gap that I just think is a bit too much. It just needs a, an extra tree just to go across that point there. That'll do. So that's my Vancouver Island painting that's, that's finished now. Um, it's a very loose painting. Um, most things are just suggested and implied rather than painted 
in great detail. Um, but I think it, it works reasonably well and I hope that you'll give something like this a try yourselves. Thanks so much for watching and please um, subscribe if you haven't already and give us a thumbs up. Um, thanks so much to my lovely um, patrons in my Patreon group who support this channel. I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.